Well, I recently had someone ask if I could do a video on uh, my loader tractor here and kind of how I have my loader hooked up. Um, just as of note, I just recently passed 200 subscribers, so I appreciate that for everyone who has subscribed. Uh, my little buddy next door, Carl the neighbor's son, Carl's over there leaf blowing today, but Chaloup uh, was wondering if I could get to 200 subscribers by the end of 2022 so i uh i did it by the end of 2021 big big milestone 200 subscribers anyway i'm just going to do a quick run around of this uh my loader tractor it's a 66 jet star 3 super i bought it probably five years ago um the guy that had it had it on propane um i switched it back to gas um Ended up having to rebuild the engine. Um, clutch is good, the torque's good. You'll notice that the nose piece is gone. That's been gone for way too long. Uh, you can see it's there on the 69, but it was dented up, uh, got it straightened up. It's primed. It's just, uh, it's been like three years that we haven't gotten that done yet. Uh, it has an own, its own uh, handmade or self-made uh bracket on the front for weights or whatever someone fab that up um i had to put new tires on the rear those are bkt uh 14928s with spin out rims and uh it's got implement tires on the front to help it float a little bit better and not dig dig in the ground and those are nine and a half 15s on the front I'm trying to think of anything else of note on this tractor um, it's kind of my workhorse obviously I've not done much to uh, to redo this one at all I did paint the wheels um, at one point I did replace one of the rear rims because of calcium um, so that's about all that I've done to this one I did on the the loader frame here so I have one outside that was on it when it came it was tweaked to one side it was actually uh if you looked at the front you could see it was that area right in there was closer than the other side it was just kind of tweaked so it was like they hit something and uh it was just the arm so i was able to get this replacement this is from a newer style uh schwartz loader and it is a uh, schwartz brand loader schwartz made these for moline and a lot of other people I was able to swap over my cylinders. I had, uh, the other one had metal lines running on the inside there. I replaced those with rubber just because getting metal ones made was very expensive. But this thing will, it is a workhorse and the bucket uh, is in good shape. That's the bucket that was on. It's a little bit big for it, but I, I've not found anything. I haven't been able to pick up with it yet. This thing really is unbelievable how much it'll pick up. I last winter picked up some logs that were uh i don't know probably four foot around i have no idea what they weighed but i thought there was no way i thought i was going to break something actually and it it picked them up uh no issues uh it does have a three point on it get back here i use it as my trail remover sometimes so right now it's got my trail remover on it but it does have a three point on it and uh it does have one set of remotes that come back here i need to replace those lines because they leak some. This thing does leak quite a bit and it's a lot of hydraulic leaks, but that's something I've got to work on. But since it gets used all the time, everybody knows how that goes. So the interesting thing I think about this is the way that they plumbed uh, the loader to work is they came out of the uh, existing places where you would normally have your remotes plugged from. So there's uh, enough there for four remotes. And then they put T's in, uh, T's in the top ones, so that goes back. So if I were to want to run something off the remote, but I would, in order to do that, I would have to unhook the loader because you can't do both at the same time. I did run a post driver with it, and that's what I had to do is I had to take off the loader valves in order to run the, the uh, remotes on the back. And then on the bottom ones, it just comes out, and then it uh, quick connects on and goes out to my 
to my bucket. So that's kind of how that's that's plumbed, and hopefully you can kind of see in there how it's done. And that being that it's that way, this one still operates the three point, and then these are for up and down, and then this one tilts the bucket. So I have all my controls right here along the side. I don't have a joystick. I just use those, but they work really well in order to do that. One of the things this tractor has that someone added on when they put the loader on it was it has a Charlin uh, reserve tank over here. So that tank is plumbed down at the bottom and it comes across and, go and tees into where they've kind of adapted where the filter is. And then it's got a hose that comes around to the pump and then goes back up. So it has all the same uh, teleflow hydraulic stuff as a normal tractor. The only thing that's different is they've added this teleflow or this Charlin tank to give me more capacity and then they've moved the uh, the filter itself out kind of remoted it out here um, and they did that by putting a, a T in there and then just solid piping out and that's how it's plumbed. Um, Somebody on the, where the arms from the loader come that come back, you can see the one down here uh, is there, but it's been cut off. And this side was cut off even a little bit further up underneath there. So someone kind of chopped that up. They didn't do the best job when they cut that off. So in a nutshell, that's, uh, that's this 66. Now it just has the three gauges up there. I, put replacement gauges in it because the ones that were there didn't work very well, uh, but it just has your oil pressure, amps, and your temp gauge up there. Temp gauge on this thing never gets, uh, never even gets up into the green. It always, this thing runs kind of cool. Um, I'll do a walk around here on the other side. So 66 uh, is denoted by it's a brown belly. So the engine and uh, transmission are gonna be brown and then everything else is gonna be yellow like the later ones. Um, it's got the, the normal seat on it. Everything else is pretty much standard. The one thing that separates the Jetstar 3 from the 302 is the hood is a one piece hood. And they really improved that on the 302 because the work on the top end of the motor or anything on this it's a darn near two-person job to get that hood off because it's it's not easy to uh to maneuver around um differences between it and the 69 are very few the only thing that's kind of different so this is kind of a later 69 jetstar 3 but it's got um it's got the five gauges so it's got a tack and then it's got your water, fuel, amps, oil, and then uh, so it's set up more like uh, like a 302 would be, although the 302, the tack is in the middle. Still has the one piece hood um, and then everything else is, is similar. Um, really that's the only difference is then in for 70 they made uh for the 70 jet stars they added the side rail there like the 302 has so you got a side rail that that runs alongside the engine so on the 1970 jet star threes they did add that which i think would be a little bit of an improvement um and then on the 70s, they would have put the true flat top fenders like is on this 7302 instead of the slightly crowned fenders that both this the, and the 66 have on it where there's uh, a shield around the, the headlight and then there is a slight crown to the top of that fender. But other than that, um, they're very similar models. The later ones did on your rate and flow levers. They went to a shorter lever, which was a very a good improvement. Anybody that has one of these knows that the longer ones oftentimes got broke. And um, that's 
kind of frustrating. You see a lot of them when you go to shows or if you see, see them around, uh, the levels levers will be broke off very similar to the way they are on the 66. I do have ones to replace that. I just hesitate to because I know that they'll probably end up getting broke uh, again. So that's kind of the stories. The 69, I guess since I'm telling a little bit of history, I told a lot, talked a little bit about the 66. But the 69, I was able to buy from the original owner's son. Um, they bought it new in the spring of 1970. Um, it was bought on his mom's birthday. And so the joke always was is that it was his mom's birthday present. But they had it and used it for quite a while. He sold it to me last year, and um, I'm glad that he did. And I actually had him uh, drive it in a parade this summer. I had to put new rear tires on it, and I painted the, the rims and the wheels, put new front tires on it, painted the white and the black band, and uh, did my decal kit on the Minneapolis Mullings on the, on the side and the front just because they were the paint was missing off of those and then buffed it and the paint on it was it was always kept inside it was uh i think turned out very nice so it's pretty much original um other than the wheels and the white band and the black band around it uh runs very good uh, nice little tractor um you can see on the 66 where i haven't done anything but the minneapolis mulling band you know it gets the way they always get starts flaking and peeling and not looking so good. One of the things that I, I like to would like to show also is uh, on here uh, when I'm looking up serial numbers and different things. This uh, this is a pretty good list of of serial numbers. So it just kind of gives you production numbers uh, and serial numbers for the years uh, that the supers were made. And uh, it's a very good resource that, uh, that I've used over time. So you can see in 66, roughly there were 185 uh, diesels made. If I go up to gases, there were about 800 and 13 if I can do quick math in my head, which I'm not great at uh, 69 there were about 285 uh, So just kind of gas ones made that is um, I think one of the things of note is of the LP gas ones in 1970 they only made 10 of them. So kind of an interesting fact um, I'm gonna guess because I have seen other Jet 3 propanes that um, they probably combined serial numbers and didn't designate out the difference between gas and propane ones uh, in the years leading up to 1970. So just as, a, of, as note. Um, but anyway, it's just an interesting thing for me to know exactly when I'm going out to look at one of these how many were made, kind of where it falls in the serial number line. Um, I think most people know, but you'll have two plates on these. You'll have an engine plate, which will kind of give you what model the engine is and the serial number of the engine. And then a second plate that'll be back underneath where the torque lever is, comes down and by the brake pedal. And that will have your model number and then your serial number. So, um, these are in really good shape and it makes it easy to read these. So just another interesting part of uh, the mulling tractors and how they put their serial number tags on. Well, that's gonna wrap it up for my quick overview of my loader tractor and uh, the 69 jet. I'm glad they're both sitting next to each other so we could kind of go over these and it makes it easy for me to pop back and forth. Hopefully my camera work did well. Um, I appreciate everybody watching and subs subscribing. I'm trying to get better at these. I'm hoping to do a plow day this fall with the 69. Uh, we'll see. Last year it was with the 955, but I think uh, 
just the way things are going to work out this year, I want to work this this uh, 69 jet a little, so I'll probably take it. can only drive one tractor at a time, and I'm going to be making a video on my work that I'm doing on the 70 propane. I'm going to have to tear into that engine. So I appreciate everybody watching, and until the next video, thanks. And uh, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe.